This new RV for 2024 is really more like a tiny home or a home on wheels or even a mansion on wheels. You have a king size bed and a queen size bed, two bunk beds, a bath and a half, so two bathrooms, and you have seating space for up to 10 people. It is absolutely unreal. Let's go take a look. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. For y'all that are new here, my name is Miles with Firmly Unbound. And if you are a returning viewer, I'm actually here with Forest River today, taking a look at a brand new product coming for 2024. Now, this may look kind of familiar if you've been on my channel before or just seen other YouTube videos of different RVs because Forest River with their Wildwood Grand Lodge as well as their Salem Grand Villa, which you see right here, both make the same models of RVs. They just have two different names that they build them under. And last year they came out with the 42 view that absolutely just went ridiculously crazy on the internet. Lots of people saw videos of that 42 view. And this year they made some changes and adjustments to offer a new floor plan here, which is now this Wildwood Grand Lodge 44 view. They'll also have the Salem Grand Villa 44 view that added a couple things that are really, really exciting. Uh, one of the first things I noticed when I walked up to this trailer is it is now a triple axle here. So this is a huge travel trailer. Really, it's a destination trailer is what it would be considered as. But the majority of people are using this as a stationary home on wheels, which is really what it is intended for, because this thing is just absolutely massive it is ridiculous how large this thing is so let's get into some specs and whatnot real quick if i can find the floor plan layout and in the uh, specs they will have been on the screen by now but right here you can see unloaded this thing is fourteen thousand five hundred and two pounds that is absolutely ridiculous 45 feet two inches long and you have a cargo carrying capacity of 1639 pounds so that triple axle helping get that additional cargo capacity there with what is already a tremendously heavy trailer here so definitely recommend or you would need like a one ton pickup truck a dually to tow something like this however keep in mind a lot of people will just pay to have a transportation company take this rv to where they want it positioned and then just set it and forget it basically and another thing that is important to note out as well is you have this really cool serving style window here that's why there's this tabletop here now, from this perspective, it's super high. I mean, this table is literally about six feet off the ground. But what a lot of people do is they are building decks around their trailer so they can have a hangout deck space on the outside here, which would obviously elevate the floor level that you're sitting at, which would make that a great serving window there. And then one of the biggest things where the name view even comes from is having all of these windows here i mean just get when we get inside you're really going to see how that feels it is very very impressive just the amount of window space you get how immersed you feel with your environment that you are camping in or that you're living in with what a lot of people are doing with a trailer like this it is just really really cool um went to a black glass door here now with this black glass door it should be noted that it's not see-through all the way through you can see when you open it up it's just like a standard RV door on the inside and then you have your window right there. But from the outside, it is that tinted glass door. All of your windows out here are tinted as well. You have outdoor speakers here and here. And then again, you have triple axle on here now. So that triple axle increasing that cargo capacity, the 42 view that they had last year, even though this isn't any longer in length than the 42 view, the 42 view is only a tandem axle, so adding that triple axle onto this unit did also increase the weight a little bit, but giving a little bit more cargo carrying capacity as well. Outlets here and spot to hook up a TV, so if you want to do some sort of satellite connection or hook up a TV outside, you have outlets to do that. Then you have your patio style doors here to go inside. We'll get there in just a second. And then they added an outlet up here as well, so the application they actually decided to add this in with was talking to a customer that said they always park their golf cart up front where their trailer's at and having an outlet there is convenient to be able to plug in and charge a golf cart, which is why they added that there. Now, another thing that makes this possible is they're doing a double drop frame. So along the back here, you see underneath here, there is a frame that is dropped down. 
So you have that drop frame there, and then you have a drop frame up front as well. But a modification that they made that is really important is they tapered off this back end here. So you see down here how that tail end is tapered off. Now that is really important for ground clearance, whether it be towing or just wherever you set this at. If you need to, you know, if it's unlevel and you need the nose end to go up higher, which would obviously dip down the tail end, that's gonna give you a little bit more ground clearance there, which is important with how low that can potentially sit to the ground with it being a drop frame like such. You have a huge awning outside. You can tell how big it is because it has the middle support arm up there as well. And that is going to be an awning that extends out over this space and is going to cover both entry doors and all that space in between. And then really important to note, no campsite slide outs. So when you are set up at your campsite or if this is a place that you are living at, this is the area you will hang out in. And there are no slide outs on this side impeding into your space, allowing it to be really easy to build something like a deck to put around your RV and hang out outside. But it still feels absolutely humongous inside. So let's go inside and take a look. Real quick, before we step inside of this RV, there's something that I'm really excited to talk to y'all about and I actually wanna ask you for a favor. So if you've been here for a while, you know that I pretty much never ask y'all of anything, but I'm going to right now because I started my second YouTube channel, which is called Firmly Unbound. Firmly Unbound is the name of my company and Firmly Unbound is an expression of exploration and freedom in work, play, and faith. And I'm really excited about what's to come on this YouTube channel. There's a link down below in the description of this video and in the comments as well, where you can subscribe to Firmly Unbound. And I pretty much spent the whole last month traveling dang near coast to coast across the United States to show you what it means to live Firmly Unbound. So some exciting video content is coming. Can't wait to see y'all there. As we step inside, man, it is just so dang impressive. Really want to know your thoughts as we go through this RV here. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, what things you like and you don't like. Even this floor plan here was so much inspired by your comments and other videos of the 42 view and changes they made based off of what they heard from you as the consumers. So they're really focused on you as a consumer trying to give you what you want. So definitely comment things that you like, things that you don't like, and any feedback is certainly appreciated. Now, the first thing obviously you notice is all of the windows on your campsite. I mean, just unbelievable the amount of window coverage that you get on this trailer. Now, something to be noted, these are single pane windows. Um, you can do a dual pane option, but I've also heard people doing things like a ceramic tint on the windows. If you're in a climate like Texas or another hot climate and you wanna use this in the summer, something like ceramic tint can be a great option as well to help with reducing heat coming in through the windows. Then, as we are talking about here, you have this serving style window right here that will open up and really all of your windows open up so you just can get great airflow through here. And actually, while I say that, all of your lower level windows open up. These ones here do not, um, but these lower level windows open up here. And you can see they will close right here like so. You do have the screen on there, so I can detach this, slide the screen over, but they make it so that screen can slide with the window if you would like, so you can use that as a serving window. Now I'm going to close that there so we don't have as much noise coming in. But I just wanted to show that you have that as a serving window. Very cool. Obviously, a huge staple in here is this absolutely crazy waterfall style island that gives you so much countertop space on here. It is just, it's the biggest island I have seen in any RV ever. I mean, it's huge. And then you have all of these bar stools down underneath here. So seating for five people right there alone. Great place if you want to play a card game, play a board game, anything like that, or just a tremendous prep space for cooking. And if you're using this serving window, you can set everything up here and have a pretty seamless, you know, uh, kitchen to serving people sort of set up here for lack of a better term. I can't think of like the proper terminology for how to explain that, but you get what I'm saying. And then if you come back to this space and where your kitchen is at, the biggest thing that they changed in this model is your bedroom is right here. So main bedroom with king bed right there. And your full bathroom is all the way over here. So a couple complaints out there about having to walk all the way across this huge 45 foot long trailer 
to use the restroom in the middle of the night or really in any circumstance. So they made some changes for this 44 view to now give you a half bath here. So now if you are on this side of the trailer, you only have to walk a few feet and you have a half bath right through here that you can use. That is going to be a porcelain foot flush toilet there. You have storage space down underneath here. And then you have your stainless steel sink there, black faucet, and you have a mirror in here as well. Plus it has this vent fan out there so you can vent air out of this space. And you have a nice spot here for additional storage and a spot to hang towels. Now, let me see, cause this does look a little narrow in here. I'm going to back myself in and sit down and we're going to see. Okay. Um, you know what? Let me do this. Got this set up so you can see how I fit in this space. I'm 6'2", 180 pounds, so not super wide. You can see it is a little tight on the shoulders. There's not a whole lot of extra room here, but if you are a more petite build, like in a woman, or if you're a little bit more slender as a man, whatever it may be, you're definitely going to fit. Now, if you're a little bit wider, it might be a little tight, um, but that's just something for you to consider. And you might need to see it in person to really see if this is something you're comfortable with, but it's for me, definitely comfortable. It's just a little narrow. So that is your half bath space there, but that is not all of the changes that they made. There are still more. We're gonna keep moving through this kitchen space here. You have the LG residential refrigerator here as well. And when I say changes, I'm saying changes compared to the 42 view that they did last year. Now, if you haven't seen that video, then that doesn't mean anything to you. So you can just consider this its own awesome standalone destination style travel trailer. You have your freezer portion down underneath here does have an ice maker under there as well. Access panel on the outside to access the winterization portion of this refrigerator as well. We'll get to the outside of the non camp side of this trailer at the end of the video. Then coming to this kitchen space, I love that they're giving you countertop space on both sides of this stove. They went with the insignia four burner stove and oven. So it is a freestanding stove and oven. Get that huge cook space on top with the four burners and then the biggest oven you are going to find in a travel trailer or any sort of RV. So got a huge oven with that. It does have a little warming tray down underneath here as well. And then you have three drawers that pull out. These now have soft closed drawers as well. So I love that. The second drawer is a little bit bigger than the top drawer. Same thing, soft closed. And then this one should be the same size here. These are gonna be solid surface countertops and look at the sparkle. I hope you can see it on camera. Those gray accents just have a little bit of a sparkle in them, giving it almost like a silvery effect. I love that. I just think it's a nice little touch that I definitely noticed. You have an outlet on this wall right here. So you get an outlet there and then this is just, you know, a standard backsplash. It's just a plastic stuck on a uh, backsplash there. You have a residential size microwave, have all your storage space around here. Also like the you know handles that they're doing on all their cabinets. I feel like these are very nice as well. And just, you know, looks modern and still easy to grab onto and open these up. Storage up above the refrigerator. I'm gonna try to get through the storage pretty quick because I know it's important for y'all to see, but it's not like the most exciting thing ever. Got storage space down underneath here as well. And then underneath your sink, got storage under here. Notice the LED lighting underneath the island. Nice little touch there as well. Gives it a nice look. Trash can underneath there. And then actually a nice big open space underneath the sink there. You have an apron style sink. It's stainless steel. Does have this drying rack on there as well. And then kind of an industrial looking black faucet. On your windows, you are going to have power shades. So if I hold this down, you can see these are all going to drop down and just, I want to see how it looks actually with all of them down. So let's let them all go down and we can see how this lighting looks in here. Awesome. Cool. So you can see now how it looks in this space. The only thing that you would need to, you know, also close to get it really blacked out in here are these drapes that would cover this patio door there. And then you have some additional um, pull down shades on windows up in the loft spaces as well. But you can see here with your shades down how it looks. Love that they add these curtains as well that can extend across to also just give it more of that home-like feel. Or if you want to leave your shades up and just move those curtains across, kind of let that natural light come in, but stop the direct sunlight from coming in. I think that would be a really nice look as well. 
as we come over to this space, another thing to look at here is your pantry. Look at that. Because they did lose a little bit of space in the kitchen, they give you a really nice pantry still. Um, they lost the space because of the half bath, but they still give you this really nice pantry that pulls out. You can see those shelves are all screwed in there. So nice, good, solid construction on that. And that is going to be a great space where you still maintain a lot of that pantry. And then you have this lounge style sofa. Let me get these, these curtains got caught or these. Uh... Okay, got those shades all the way down. You can see they are a blackout shade on there. Love the light fixtures here in the slide out as well. And keep in mind, this whole wall here is all a slide out. So from here all the way to here, all a slide out. So all the way through to the fridge. And then you have your L-shaped sofa. Great space here. This is going to pull out and make into a bed. I'll show that in just a second. And then you have that L-shape and then you will have storage down underneath here as well. You get the ottoman. This is just freestanding. So you can do with this as you like. And it will have storage space down underneath there as well. So that's going to be a nice open storage space through there. can move that around. Love how you can just, you know, if you're just on this by yourself, very easy to just kick your feet up, lay back into the corner and get very comfortable in this space. Watch your TV there or just have a view of everything going on. If you just, you know, have somebody cooking in the kitchen here, people sitting there playing cards or whatever, you can still get a comfortable space to lay here. And if you want to lay down... Let's see what the length on this thing is. Try not to get the sofa dirty or anything like that. Okay. It's about uh, to where my head hit. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's about six foot, maybe six foot one from this armrest to like where your head would hit the backrest there. If you're under six feet, you definitely can lay out and stretch across there all the way. Me being slightly over six feet. If I took my shoes off, I feel like I probably can. If not, I mean, just like slightly curl into this space and can lay all the way out. So love that too. I think that's important. Now let me break this down and kind of show you what's underneath this sofa here. First off, when you remove these cushions, you're going to have storage space down underneath here. So you do have access to that storage there. And this is actually, you know, freestanding door. So it can be completely removed there and you'll have access to that storage. Now, this is my favorite thing about an L-shaped sofa is if you do want to convert it into a bed space, it turns this whole thing into one massive bed that is essentially going to be like the size of a king size bed with how you utilize this trifold sofa part and it's still connected to the rest of the sofa. So love that. That gives you a huge additional sleeping space if you should find yourself needing it, even though there are still so many more beds for us to get to in this RV. Get that all converted back. It only takes about 20 seconds. It's really quick. And then last thing I want to show you in this area is you do have a residential style heating system. So you do have heat ducts ran through the flooring there, which is going to be your most direct way to get heat fed into an RV, which is good in something like this that is more designed for full-time living, making sure it's super efficient. You have your TV on what is like a televator here. So this will go up and down. And then that looks to be about a 50 inch screen TV there that you have. And it is an insignia TV. You have your Furion soundbar here, spot for some decor or whatnot, or if you want to put, there's really no access actually for something here to feed up into the TV. So it really just looks like decor, but you do have an HDMI cable here or an HDMI plug here that will run to the TV. So if you did want to put some sort of Blu-ray player or something in the space, you can do that. You have your, um, fireplace here which this is one of two fireplaces in this rv both can actually be ran at the same time now which was something that i guess was not true on the 42 view so love that love that they figured that out to get away where you can run both fireplaces at the same time you'll see the other one when we get to the bedroom it does have a bit of a mirrored finish to it so if i turn this off you can see it kind of conceals that there where it looks more like a mirror than anything else and it does have multiple different color options as well as we move back this way, you have some storage back behind here. So this will lift up and you'll have storage space back through there as well. A great spot to put blankets and things like that. And you also have an outlet here as well. Now, back in this space, they made some additional adjustments. We're going to go up first, um, but I want to talk about the AC real quick because they did something important with the AC system. 15,000 BTU AC here. 15,000 BTU AC here as well, both ducted together through the RV and they are using this RV airflow systems. And this here actually increases the airflow 
through your ducting up to 40%. Um, there's some videos on the internet and things like that where people have attached you know, strings to these vents here to show the airflow before and after adding that system on. And usually that's like an additional thing that people might put into their RV after purchasing that they're now doing standard in these models to really make sure you get good efficient airflow to keep this thing cool. As we go up these steps, first of all, it is like, you know, almost like a residential style step there. So very easy to go up and down. You do have a central vac system here. So hose can connect to that. And you have the floor sweep here. So you can just sweep all your dust and debris there. And that will suck it up into your central vac system as well. And as we go up these steps here, this is where we are going to find your queen bed up in this space. Now this loft is 36 inches tall. So I'm going to go sit up in the space. You're going to be able to see how I fit, but it is a huge loft now the drop frame is what allows this to be possible and now you have a queen size bed in last year's 42 view model there was actually like a partition here in the middle that made it where they had just like a single bunk and a single bunk on each side now you get a um 60 by 74 inch queen bed so it's an rv queen standard queen is 80 inches long this is 74 inches long and then you can see that storage space that you get here let me just show you this real quick. The great thing about the height on this loft is like I can crawl up here on all fours as a grown adult that is six foot two and not hit my back or my head on the ceiling. You have outlets up above that tabletop space there and outlets here as well. Can also put a TV in that space if you would like. And then let me just set the camera down so you can see me up in this space and what it looks like. So here you can see how I would fit laying kind of up against the wall a little bit. If I lay all the way down flat, I am about 74 inches tall, so my feet would really be hitting the end of the bed there. Might be hanging off slightly, but plenty of width here as well. Definitely can make it work. Again, it's not like I need the most comfortable situation possible to sleep in something like this. Also, like, can almost sit up straight here, but not quite because of the thickness of the mattress. Um, this mattress looks like it's probably about at least a good six inches thick. So that's something to keep in mind too, but easily could lay down here. It's plenty comfortable. Um, and then if I get, you know, off the mattress, you can see here th in this space, I can sit up perfectly. And now I can sit here. Gosh, I could even see just like hanging out up here. It's, it's really comfortable once you get the mattress off and, you know, you can make this space whatever you want. Obviously this is how it's going to come, but you want to take the mattress out. You want to put bunk beds in here. Like make this space what you want it to be. This is just how it's gonna come from the factory. So if you have a different idea for how you would use this space, let me know down below in the comments. So that is this bunk space here with the queen size bed. Again, this is a 60 by 74 inch size queen size bed. So it's like an RV queen, not a true residential queen. And again, you have your storage space there. You do have pull down blackout shades on your windows and you do have a privacy curtain here for this railing that is all right there. And then you have your steps going down. Um, one thing I noticed too, you do have LED lighting up above your slide out here. Also want to appreciate like the black ceiling fan that's in here and that beam that goes across there, all just helping to give it, you know, a residential feel. Then as you step down, um, underneath this area is your full bathroom. Now they have these really interesting style doors here that kind of pivot open so that they don't really get in the way and you step down into this bathroom because of that drop frame and look at all the floor space in this bathroom. I mean, this is just unreal. The amount of floor space in here, really, really impressive. Great ceiling height as well. It feels like the ceiling height in here has got to be at least like six, seven, maybe. I mean, I'm definitely at least six, two, possibly six, three with my boots on and on my tiptoes, my head still does not touch the ceiling. So it's got to be like six, seven, maybe even six, eight. I just don't have a tape measure on me, but really great height. Shower, lots of great space in there as well. You have a porcelain foot flush toilet here. Now, if you need that additional shoulder space, plenty of room here, definitely not limited as far as shoulder space goes here with that seating position there. Has a washer and dryer installed here. So you're gonna get that washer and dryer in this space. And these are a Splendid brand washer and dryer. So an RV size washer dryer. You have another vent fan here as well. So you can vent out any air in this space, whether you're taking showers, just use the restroom, whatever it may be. Pull down blackout shade on the window there, but you are also going to have a nice window looking outside if you want to just, you know, use the toilet with a view. You can do that. If this is just a great view here for you, I mean, 
by all means, go for it. So you're going to have that as well. You have nice big open storage space through here, open storage space through there as well. And then solid surface countertop back through this bathroom, just like in the kitchen. You have a plastic, nice good size sink here. You can see how my hands fit in that space. Plenty of depth there. Black faucet, nice little ledge here, and then a nice big mirror with kind of like a hotel style lighting there as well. Now with your shower, you have this really nice, you know, tower sort of system with the two shower heads here. You have the wand and you have this head right there. Now when I step in here, this does sit a little low for me. So a camera is in my eye height. You can see this is probably gonna spray down and hit my chest. So I would have to duck down a little bit underneath it or just use the wand. But you do also have the seat back here so you can sit in that seat area there. It is a little bit of a small seat, but you do have that or that's also just a spot that you can put your soap and stuff like that as well. And then this here along the sides is all just like a basically like a plastic material that looks really nice and has a good kind of residential finish to it. Sliding glass shower door and then again, nice length on that shower there as well and good width, very comfortable. So all in all, really nice bathroom space. Last little thing is your storage. You have pull out drawers here. Again, soft clothes on those and then a couple baskets underneath here that it will come with. So you'll have that additional storage space under there as well. Then as we go to the other side, there's still so much more. You walk all the way across. Gosh, it's, it's a long walk over to this other side. You have the spiral staircase going up here. I mean, can we just appreciate how nice that spiral staircase looks? Love what they did with that, being the innovators and, you know, introducing something like this in the market. It looks really, really cool. You step up into this space. Now, I'm not going to lay down in this one because this is more of like, you know, a kid size bunk area. But you can see you have the teddy bear bunk series. So these are going to basically be like a, you know, twin size sleeping arrangement. We have a bunk on each side and then you're going to have the storage space in between. Again, you have your AC up above here as well. Going to be ducted through the whole RV. You have all of these little cubbies here for storage. So you get six of them. Outlets, USB ports up there. Also going to have outlets and USB ports up on this side as well. And then these are going to be about look to be about six foot long, maybe about six foot two, six foot four, somewhere around there. Since I said it, I'm going to have to lay in it now and just find out. Let's see. They are a little bit on the squishy side, so definitely more intended for like a lightweight kid. Yeah, they're probably about six foot, about six foot on the length on those. You also have space up here. So nice storage space that you have. Or, you know, if you just have real little ones, kind of a cool spot too to just kind of sit up here and hang out and see the rest of the trailer and see everybody inside the trailer. Spot there, outlets and a spot to hook up a TV plus connections for a uh, Wi-Fi system if you wanted to go with like a King Wi-Fi booster or something like that. And then climb back down. Again, being a grown adult, these lofts just have so much space to easily fit inside of there. And then just pretty dang cool. Your steps down, kind of spiraling down there. It's a lot of fun. You have these baskets here, so you're going to have more additional storage there. And then you step down into your main bedroom, which is going to have this VersaTilt king bed. Now this is gonna give you an additional 14 inches of floor space in this bedroom. Really, really nice how much space is in here. I mean, it is just crazy impressive the amount of room you get, even just like walking space on this side of the bed. Really great because of how this is designed here in the front cap area, giving you room to walk around you have the storage space up above here. These are all solid wood, by the way, with your um, cabinet doors. Have that storage space all the way through there. You're going to have, again, your windows out here. Have some other people filming this RV as well. And then you're going to have four pull-out drawers. These are soft clothes as well. Solid surface countertop. Hookups for a TV if you wanted to install a TV here. These are going to be manual. Pull down blackout shades there. And then... You have a full body mirror here. So nice full body mirror there. You can see yourself before you step out of the bedroom. Fireplace in here as well. You can see the other fireplace is running. This fireplace is running. Get both of them running at the same time. And then storage space through here. You have a pull out drawer right there. And then this looks like it's its own individual space with hanging spots there. And then a much bigger space it looks like through here. So for most people, that's probably going to be a his and a hers in most instances, I would imagine. 
a nice good spot to hang clothes there. Have all your mirrors on those. Window here, window here, and then it does have a headboard back behind that space. And then when you drop the bed down, this has that same style door here. So it's kind of on a hinge there. And then your switch for the bed is right here. So it will hold it down, drop down like so. Like I said, you're gonna get 14 extra inches of floor space with this. And now they've put the switch here on this other wall because they cannot have you operating this while you're on the bed. So they make sure not to put the switch somewhere where you can operate it while on the bed, need to operate it while you're off the bed. And if you did wanna upgrade this mattress, from what I understand, this mechanism is rated for up to 600 pounds. You just have to be mindful that that mattress is gonna to need to bend a little bit so that it can get up into that seating position there. But something that you should be able to do if you feel the need to upgrade the mattress. Let's get this back up and then we'll look underneath the bed here. Comes with all the bedding and pillows. Um, this is actually a pretty good mattress that it's coming with. It's a Serta mattress and it's a, looks like it's a 66 inch by 80 inch long mattress on that there. If those are the dimensions that I'm seeing there. Um, and so that's not bad actually, pretty good. And then you have this shelving down underneath here. So you have a spot where you can put shoes, additional clothes, stuff like that. And because it's on this tilt system, I don't think there's, it's gonna lift up for storage underneath the bed. Oh no, it does. Ooh, it does have storage underneath the bed. Nice. So you get that storage underneath there, even with that tilting system. Love that. I really didn't think that would be the case. So that is awesome. Get all your windows in here. So windows all the way around. Again, gonna have a great view waking up in the morning. And even if you just, you know, it's at night, you have people out doing a campfire or whatever outside, you can still be in this room, still see what's going on and still feel involved in the experience. Don't have too much FOMO, you know? That's the thing with having all these windows. I'm someone that's big on FOMO. Like I experience FOMO like crazy. Having all these windows makes it so you always know what's going on and you're not missing out on the action which I really, really like. Let's get these uh, shades back up. But that is everything on the inside. So let me know what you think, what you like, what you don't like about this RV here. And I'm gonna go wrap up, finishing on the non-campsite outside real quick for the people out there that really like that technical information. And then we'll wrap this video up. So as we go along to the front, come up here and you're going to have two 30 pound propane bottles up front here, manual tongue jack. And you can see the way that the front cap looks, looks really nice. It has the big windows here. And then this looks like it's a, uh, I don't know what, yeah, this is an aluminum material here on that front end there. So have your logo there and it's pretty, you know, squared off up front for that look, giving it that destination style trailer. Um, definitely not super aerodynamic, not really designed to be towed down the road all that often. It is designed to be towed, just not on a regular, consistent basis. You have your slide out here. Slide toppers already installed, so those are going to protect your slide out. Um, there is no ladder on this unit to get up to the roof, so you can just have your own like standalone ladder to get up there. As we come down this way, it does have these like stabilizer spots here if you want to add additional stabilization to the slide storage space underneath the bed. So access to that. Come down underneath here, you can see you have your fresh water drain right there. You have your drop frame and then down underneath here, you have for your underbelly, fully enclosed underbelly, all your water tanks and water lines sit above the enclosed underbelly. And then you have some of your plumbing down underneath here as well. Um, their underbelly as well, instead of just being one solid sheet, they actually have it you know, kind of piece together every four feet. So if you ever had to get underneath there, it's a lot easier. You don't have to actually cut into it or anything like that. You can actually just take off a panel in the area where you need to take that off at. You have a rack and pinion style slide out mechanism underneath here. And then this is that access panel to your refrigerator here for winterization with that ice maker there on the fridge. Come along this side, they even added like a support arm here for your slide topper with how big this slide out is just shows how massive that slide out there is and then underneath here you have a standard leaf spring suspension underneath there and then these are a radial tire it is a 235 80r16 tire there and then you have a spot here for your dump tanks it looks like this is going to be Gosh, it looks like that's probably black and gray tanks for like your kitchen sink and the second full bathroom. 
I imagine this here, actually, okay, no. This here gonna be black and gray tanks for the bathroom. And then this is also gonna be your gray tank for the washer dryer. And then this here looks like that's gonna be your black and gray tank for the half bath, as well as your gray tank for the kitchen sink. And everything is all right here, right next to each other. So nothing on the other side of the axles that I saw, except for your fresh water drain. Yeah, so everything will run back to behind the axles here. And then coming down underneath here, um, 50 amp power supply, tankless on-demand water heater. So you're gonna have that tankless on-demand water supply and then black tank flush valve here and up in this space. Of course, I don't have a key here, but this is gonna be access to water heater components through there from what I understand. Dryer vent for the dryer. And then again, you have that tapered off um, tail end here. And you know what? This actually looks like that is the gray tank dump valve right there. So I think I misspoke. Looks like that's gonna be black and gray tank for um, just your sink and shower. And then you're gonna have another gray tank back here. So that would make sense actually, cause you probably want a good gray tank capacity there just for the shower and then have a separate one for the washer and dryer. So that makes sense. Come to the back, you can see your vent fan off the back here, big window for when you're on the toilet and then you have a cable connection right here. Can't pop that thing open. Oh, I don't know why I can't get that open, but that's a cable connection there. You have your brake lights off the back and that is just about it on this new 2024 Forest River Wildwood Grand Lodge 44 view. Again, they also make the Grand Villa from Salem, which will essentially be the same thing, just two different brand names that Forest River makes. So that's all I got for y'all. I'm very curious your thoughts. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And that's all I got for y'all. Until next time, live firmly on bounds.